the critic who, you've been invoked by many figures in literary culture, but also in popular culture because of the interface between your work and popular culture. Bob Dylan took a title from your first book, Love and Theft, and turned it into an album cover. But there's a figure who was important to the formation of the American Renaissance, who, like you, is simultaneously in the profession and treated as something like a cultural outlaw at the same time. And you're able to turn that into a performative power that produces insight. I'm talking about Leslie Fiedler. Mm -hmm. Leslie Fiedler, who writes Life and Death in the American novel, and who also engages Mark Twain's Huckleberry Finn in a very famous essay called Come Back Onto the Raft Again, Huck Honey. What kind of influence did Fiedler have on the construction of your literary persona as a, as a cultural critic? That's a really interesting question. Fiedler always characterized himself as this kind of outlier, larger than life, even though he wasn't that tall, uh, <laughs> entertainer type figure. He's understood to be one of the canonical New York intellectuals of the 1940s, 1950s, 1960s, and yet for many years taught at the University of Montana. Uh, and then after that, uh, State University of New York uh, at Buffalo, SUNY Buffalo. So he was never in uh, New York City circles. He was in town all the time. And there's something about that kind of outlier sensibility that, that is very appealing. Uh, even before you get to the ideas that are so powerful and that drove his work, the idea uh, in the, uh, the Huck Finn article that you mentioned, which fuels a lot of the analyses in Love and Death in the American novel, which I essentially re refunctioned for my title, Love and Theft. And complicate. Interesting. Perhaps, uh, it, it, you know, rely on the sense that over and over again in uh, American literary texts, the texts at least of white male authors, you see a white character put in proximity to a dark-skinned character out in some kind of void, yes. the woods, the sea, the river. And uh, the idea there being that there's some attempt at racial healing through this pairing that will take place in the, in, in the course of a, narrat of a narrative, whether it's Huck and Jim, Ishmael and Queequeg, Matty Bumpo and uh, Chingachgook. And to me, tur just turning to blackface performance, I thought, well, there you have it in a single character. There you have it in a single performer, the white man and the black image or fantasy. And, but not in any way uh, rac racially reparative, on the contrary. And yet, my argument in the Minstrel Show book is that as driven by racist japery as the form was, there is always this kind of cross-racial fascination, interest, love is too strong a word probably, but, uh, but a real, even Ralph Ellison uh, once said, you know, these fellas, they were jerks, yeah, but they had to open their, but in order to do what they did on stage, they had to open their ears they had to open their eyes to black Americans and pay attention, even uh, to attempt to uh, mimic them in the, in the kind of puny ways that they did. So, and I think that's incredibly consequential. And what this new book tries to do is show how widespread a structure of feeling that is all across dominant cultural forms, not just the classic American novel, but Hollywood film, pop musical artistry, venturesome social commentary, and more. It's been a privilege talking to you. My pleasure. Thank you.